Well, we wanted to uh, share with you some of, uh, in our experience, things that we wouldn't go sailing uh, overnight or on anything but a day sail uh, without some items to have aboard. And, uh, and I'd say that number one above all else is uh, bring my wife because she is more useful than a Leatherman tool and prettier <laughs> than a pack mule <laughs> every time. And so, but besides that, also, so these are things that you maybe wouldn't think of otherwise that you've got to make sure is on your list. Because, I mean, some things are going to be obvious that we're not going to cover, like your cell phone, uh, life jackets, you know, Coast Guard required rain safety, gear. your rain gear, right? You're, oh, you're going to bring those things. And so maybe this is the stuff that uh, after, you get, after the initial things you're obviously going to bring, you might forget. And so don't because uh, we wouldn't. And so, uh, you know, I guess I've got this thing kicked off. Morgan, how about the uh, first item? What wouldn't you go sailing without? Uh, I wouldn't sail without, let's see, what do we want to start with? Um, a hat. It could be many hats. But I usually wear a wide brim hat because um, the sun is really bright. And it's also good to help with your vision uh, to see things in the distance, especially in fog. Um, I wear many hats. I got a Stormy Cromer for when the temperature starts to drop. And... It doesn't even have to be a major drop. It could be like 70 degrees, and I'm wearing this one instead. Um, and fog. I wear it in the fog. And you also got this hat, and it's very noticeable. So, I, you know, if I'm working on deck, I want to be noticed if I fall overboard. The hat is the way to go. Orange hat. And it's in time for, it's almost in time for hunting, so... Um, I'm rounding up. <laughs> but, I, I like how item number one is hats, plural. Yeah. <laughs> Bring your hats. Bring your hats, your mini hats. And I mean, they can always go on top of each other. So, you know, <laughs> I can always put this one on top of that one. So, uh, yeah. You look awesome. Mm -hmm. So how about, you know, let's, let's stick with uh, item number two. Uh, it was more clothing item. Uh, this is the last of the clothing items, I promise. But, uh... You know, even if it's the middle of summer and it's supposed to be like really, really warm out, you might forget things like your long johns. You wouldn't even think of it. But long johns are not just for winter time. They're actually for sailing all the time when you're up north here in Maine. Uh, the uh, you know the wind picks up and uh, you and if you forgot your long johns, you're in bad shape. And not just any long johns. Get like the wool or synth. Synthetic, not cotton, because cotton is rotten. If it gets wet, you're gonna be, you're gonna be feeling it. So quality long johns, and um, you know, I just say like warm gear. You know, if you watch my videos, you'll see that I wear my wear my float coat a lot. Now, this sucker is both a life jacket and a, a winter coat, and and it's every time the wind starts blowing. Or I put this thing on because not only is it safe because I'm, I'm now wearing a life jacket, but um, it keeps me uh, warmer and more comfortable. So the float coat is great. It doesn't have to be a float coat. Just bring a winter jacket with you. Even if you don't think you're going to need it, bring a winter jacket. Um, the next thing is sunblock. You never know when you're going to need it. Um, I find with, glass, with the, the fact that I wear glasses... And I'm looking at the water, the glare from both of them usually gets my nose sunburned and my lips sunburned. It's either windburn, sunburn. Um, it kind of helps to have some sunblock. I will only put it on my face usually. And the rest of the year I'm covered up in clothing. So, um, yeah, it helps to have some kind of skin protection. Nice. How about um, tools? Uh you know, we keep a complete tool set on board because we live here, so why wouldn't we? And uh, we do all our own repairs and maintenance. But if you were to bring just one tool, I'd say bring your Leatherman tool. Because, uh, you know, you're going to be able to open up shackles with your pliers. You're going to be able to get into your deck sockets for filling water and fuel by sticking this into your socket and turning. Uh, you've got a knife right handy. Uh, you've got... Even, even the things like this little, uh, it's supposed to be a seatbelt cutter or a gut hook. Uh, I use it when I'm wiring for, uh, you know, pulling uh, zip ties. Put your zip tie in there and cut it. Uh, you know, instead of uh, grabbing 
all of my tools, I can get, I mean, Phillips, the flathead, I can get almost anything done that I need done around the boat with my Leatherman tool on my hip before having to go into my rest of my tools. Bring a Leatherman tool. It doesn't have to be Leatherman either, right? Gerber, Sog, whatever. I'm talking about a multi-tool, to be clear. Um, next thing, binoculars. Um, I use them for scouting out a mooring if we got a mooring for the night to do errands and, and laundry and showers. Uh, usually, I don't know where they are. Like, uh, a couple, two days ago, we were, we were getting a mooring to do our laundry and showers, and he's like, it's on the port side. Well, there's like hundreds of moorings all along the port side of the harbor, and there's a variety of different places that have moorings. So uh, I'm looking for a particular number, and I'm looking for a particular color, and um, or stripe, or something. And these just kind of help give you a little bit uh, heads up of where they are. Also, too, with lobster pots, if you have toggles on them, you want to know which way they're flowing and how to, to, and, you know, binoculars help with seeing that. So, like, you know, if we're really in a CD spot and I need to know which, where the pots are, this is a good tool to have just to see, to give yourself, um, you know, if you have a partner on board, just to have them keep a lookout. Uh, also, too, it's a good thing, entertaining thing at night to, you know, in the evenings to look at other people's boats and see what they have on board and and uh, nerd out the boat equipment. And so I guess uh, here's my recommendation is um, I like 10 power uh, binoculars because um, any less than that, you're not getting the uh, distance that you, the, the zoom that you are uh, going to be useful to you. But any more than that, what happens is, you know, your boat is typically moving and flowing with the ocean and whatever you're looking at also is. And if you've got a, a, a zoom that's greater than 10, that exaggerates that zoom. And so you're going to have a hard time focusing on what you're trying to, let's say you're trying to read a boat name off the transom. Um, and so just everybody, I'm sure, has their own op opinion on this. And uh, mine is a 10 power binocular is the, uh, the way to go. Uh, you know what, how about, I'll, I'll do one next. Uh, flash lights. No, uh, torches. Torches, as the British might say. Um, you know, I know Morgan here. We were talking about how she, she, for her job at the marina, she probably boards like a hundred boats a year, and uh, she's just noticed that there isn't uh, very many flashlights, if any at all. And if there's a flashlight on board, it's probably in a drawer somewhere, or maybe out of batteries. Uh, now we are flashlight crazy because I like to have a flashlight, maybe two in every space, and maybe one on my person. Uh, and they come in different sizes, right? And we don't really go, we don't spring for the cheap ones either. You know, our our personal favorite brand is Streamlight. And uh, because they're waterproof and they come in different varieties. Uh, and all of ours are uh, USB rechargeable. So I don't have to worry about the batteries in it. It's just from time to time I plug it in and it charges up. And so we've got the little one that fits in your pocket real nice. And it can go on your hat. Yeah, it's got this little clip on there. And so it can go on your hat. And then I also like you know, a more of a big daddy one, uh, and at night I'll wear it on my hip, on my belt, and during the daytime it sits on a sheath in a conspicuous area so I can grab it in a hurry. Um, and you might say, well, I don't sail at night, why would I want a flashlight? And, well, I'll tell you, it's because you're out in the sunlight and your eyes get really used to the brightness of the day, and then you come down below and then you try to find something in a drawer or you try to check the bilge. Or, God forbid, you hear a crazy noise coming from your engine hole, and you need to go take a look at that engine. And now, with you're going to want a flashlight, because your eyes aren't adapted to being in a dark space right then. And so you need that flashlight uh, quickly, and that's not something that you need to think about. While I'm hearing a knocking in the engine, I'm not going to be thinking about, where did I put my flashlight? I'm going to have a flashlight right quick and handy. So, flashlights. Um, another thing. Ah, uh, bags. Um, I particularly want to search for Chico bags because they're pretty handy. I can, they can, you know, when you want to go into town, maybe you act, go to the grocery store only want to buy one thing and come out with 10. Um, or, you know, you got shower stuff. You want to go take a shower or you want to go on a picnic or, you know, just any little random thing. You're walking into a town and you see a sign, Farmer's Market today. Yeah. Ho hooray. Hooray. <laughs> um, and 
it's just good to contain things on board the boat. Like if you have stuff that's on the table and you're like, I don't know where to put it, put it in a bag and then hang it on a doorknob or um, put it on in a little nook or something. Uh, that way it can, things can be contained and they're not free flowing all over the boat. But with the Chico bags, they go into a bag, they have a bag attached to the bag and the bag goes into a bag. And it's also got a little carabiner to click up onto your belt loop or your backpack or, you know, whatever. I highly suggest them. Small bags are the way to go instead of having a bunch of groceries. You know, the bags, the reusable bags you get at the grocery store are great. But then you got to fold them up and find a spot for them. But these can just be thrown in a backpack or thrown in a drawer, thrown anywhere. And um, I like these a lot. Cool. I got one, but it's over here. We'll be right back. handheld radio now I, I mean I have a ship's radio and it's hardwired into the boat and that's lovely but uh, there might be a situation where I lose power completely uh, so having this as a backup is fantastic but more than that in a, in an emergency this thing has a couple of functions that I highly recommend uh, you know ours is a standard horizon uh, HX 870 uh, it's a bit older now, so I'm sure they'd probably make a newer model. But some things that I uh, really, really recommend about this radio. You've got DSC distress button. And so I've pre-programmed uh, this to with our uh, MMSI number and information on the boat. And so I click distress in an emergency. And even if the boat's lost power completely, it's another distress beacon. And uh, And what's huge about this is that... Uh, right in the front screen, it's got its own GPS, and so right on the front screen, it's got its latitude and longitude. And what's important there is I may not be at the helm during an emergency. I could be down below working on a medical emergency or trying to get uh, you know something running or fixed, and I need to report to the Coast Guard or any other vessel who's going to respond and help me. And I'm not going to run back up to the deck to look at my GPS to get my latitude and longitude. I can do it right here on this radio, and it's right here in front of my face. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to read off a display and speak clearly into a radio when your adrenaline is going and things are going really bad, but it's nice to have this latitude and longitude right under my nose so I can hold that push-to-talk button and then uh, describe who I am, the nature of my distress, and my position exactly. And, um, and this can be done anywhere on the boat, or even if not on the boat, man, maybe I'm in the dinghy trying to deal with something. I can bring this with me. Um, this I keep very close at hand uh, because uh, if I if I need to move away from the helm, I snap up my radio and I take this with me because uh, I mean I wouldn't go sailing without a little handheld radio. And it's got the weather. Well, it's got weather channel, yeah, weather channel, and um, I mean it's not cheap, right? But it's not, it's probably less expensive than a new pair of boots, and so worth it. Next thing. snacks um i like to bake and i just went cheap and got box brownies but it could be you know mini candy bars it could be candy it can be chocolate it can be granola bars apples fruit whatever whatever your your poison just make sure you have your morale boosters when um you're going slower than molasses or the weather is beating you up or it's you know, cold or, you know, you just want something to kind of give you a little bit more of some happiness throughout the day. <laughs> um, you know, snacky items, easy snacky items. Um, so have your choices, like have your, your treats on board. Nice. Okay. Because we're taking turns pretty nicely. I'll do the next one. Oh, that'll be yours. All right. How about uh, something to read? Now, uh, because you probably, there's a good chance you're not going to have any cell service, so you're not going to be scrolling through your Facebook or Instagram feed uh, on the downtimes. And, you know, it's great spending quality time with my wife and my cat, but uh, you, there's, there are other times when it's actually nice just to be quiet by myself and uh, reading a book. It doesn't have to be paperback. It can be a Kindle that you downloaded, um, books up. The internet when you were somewhere where you could download things um 
It could also be, you know, cards or, you know, d games, whatever. Just have something to kind of occupy your time other than, you know, talking to your partner or your, 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 your teammate, whatever. Um, cause you can just talk, you can talk about everything and you don't have anything to discuss cause you've talked it all out. So, but you know, you don't I, have things to talk about. My preference though, is to have real physical books on board as opposed to the Kindle. Now this is, uh, mostly because I think it's a really fun part about, uh, cruising when you're, uh, when you're sailing for days and days on end is to have your books just about all finished. And then you meet another cruiser who's also finished all his or her books. And then you get to trade. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a fun part of the community. And that book was a trade. This book is a trade, yep. Yep, we got that. And also, too, another thing that I'm going to recommend, because some people might not guide books. Uh, I've talked about them earlier in other videos. I'll grab one. I like to read them. And I like to read all the side stories in them. And uh, I like to look at the pictures and... You know, they just are very interesting. I like to read them and, and explore where other, other places I may want to go and um, and have the time to be able to do it. Like, sometimes you if you're rushing and you're trying to find the next spot, like, you may miss something. So, you know, evening read. It's fun. And this one from the uh, Tafts, Hank and Jan Taft, um, that's what every uh, sailor in Maine that I've ever met has on board. So if you're trying to sail Maine without this one, you're, a, you're in a vast minority. Go get yourself a copy. And, you know, I think we started running out of items here to recommend. We got you a couple more. But, got you a couple more? Okay. We're going to say, bring your favorite warm beverage. Uh, I think that the obvious one for many people who enjoy, uh, you know, adult beverages is like, oh, you wouldn't go sailing without your beers. But... Beers will only take you so far. Coffee and tea are the staples of the sailor's diet. You just really don't get very far without caffeine unless you're not a caffeine person, in which case your chamomile tea to help you sleep or whatever your... Hot cocoa. Hot cocoa. Yeah, warm beverages in the evenings or mornings. So it, also, too, having a hot, having a teapot on board or some kind of pot to, to, to boil water is a major necessity, I think, um, especially if you are in cold environments, you want to be warm from internally, warm from the inter internal, then warm your guts, warm your guts, um, then externally too. So it's nice to have a hot beverage, even if it is nothing in it. I like to drink nothing tea and um, just drink hot water. And, you know, you can put honey in it, lemon, tea, coffee, cocoa, whatever. Um, but it's good to have a hot liquid. And if your boat's not so equipped with a uh, galley that has uh, something like an alcohol stove or propane stove or electric range or whatever, uh, we got by just fine on one of those green Coleman, uh, you know, camp yeah. stoves. Uh, that's that's good enough. What's wrong with that? Or even just your camp, like your jet boil, or we have an MSR um, cooking stove. Yeah, I can't remember what the model tripod is. Tripod thing. Yeah. Um, it's just good to have something that can create heat and, and, and make things hot. Whisper Light International. Whisper that's, Light International. That's ours. That's we, for backpacking and camping. Yeah, but we have it on board just in case um, we run out of propane. Um, it's a good backup. Also, we bring it ashore when we go camping sometimes. Mm -hmm. Did you have any more you wanted to share? Yes. Oh, sweet. Buckets. Holy buckets. Holy buckets. As they say in Minnesota. Um, this bucket was never intended to stay on board it came on board from a friend who used it to load wood and it stayed on board and now i find i use it for everything um i use it to clean the anchor i use it to sponge out the bilges i use it to wash fruits and vegetables i use it for everything maybe i use it to soak my feet too I don't laundry know. laundry it it we use it for everything so a bucket especially with a lanyard um it's definitely a power up just any kind of bucket, just have one. It's good. And so here's a here's a tip. If you want to get uh, seawater onto your boat, and maybe I'll demonstrate this. Uh, I'll cut to it, but I'll also explain it, I guess. Is uh, it's, if you throw it behind your boat, what it typically does is lands on the water and doesn't really scoop any water. And so what you do, this has got a little bit of water in it. But what you do 
is you throw it in this orientation. Here's the water. And then when you pull up on it, it scoops the water out. Now, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing trick. I don't, know how long, I don't know how many buckets that I threw in the water and let it just drag. Until it caught. Until it caught. Before I figured out, you throw it like this. Boop. And then when you pull it up, it's right full of water. Hmm. Uh Do the whole thing over again, too. That's a full bucket. Cool. Hmm. Um, another thing is to have on board to pass the time away and also to find food is fishing. Um, we have two fishing poles now and uh, we got fishing gear. Um, just a variety of lures, you never know. Something's shiny and sparkly. Now don't ask us our fishing ch tips because we're not pro fisher people, but even an amateur can throw out a line and a lure and catch a fish from time to time. Yeah, it's just a good pastime and um, it's always fun catching something. Uh, right now, all we've been seeing are alewives or I guess pogies. And so, um, they're good fish too, but they're bony, and I'd rather have a mackerel, but I haven't found any yet, so, yeah. Is that all of our items? I think so. Okay, yeah, we tried to limit to, to about 10 items, and we tried to say what uh, maybe you wouldn't have thought of, and so, it seems a bit random, uh, but I, I didn't count that that was actually 10 or not, but oh, plus or minus. Another one, have charts, paper charts, uh, they're fun. Yeah. They are fun, you know, because even if you're doing 100% electronic navigation, you still, it's good for uh, trip planning. Uh, you can see a bigger picture instead of scrolling through your little screen. You've got a picture and then you can have a discussion with your crew and we can all see uh, uh, what, what, the, what the world looks like better on a chart. Yeah. And if it's a colder time, especially in like spring and fall, have a heater on board, a Mr. Buddy or a stove. I guess we can keep going and going and going. Yeah, I'll <laughs> keep going and going. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. Okay, I'm done too. But, okay. you know, it, it, we might have missed something. So if you want to uh, leave a comment and say what we definitely missed, uh, you know, that be, contribute to the conversation. Encore. Encore. One more item. <laughs> we, we ended that video and forgot about, like, one of, I don't know, I, I, I dare say one of the most important things we have on board. No, yeah. no, I guess that's it's an one exaggeration. One of the major important. It's an exaggeration, but we freaking love these things. Uh, it, well, this is a Lucy Light, and you can find these at the Marine Store, Hardware Stores, Outdoor Stores, yeah, Sportsy Stores, Sportsy Stores. And uh, what we love about them is is the solar panel, and then it gathers up the sunbeams, and then you use it to light your boat. You can use it in uh, you know, emergency lighting for uh, you know an anchor light. Uh, but we just use it to save our boat batteries. That way we're not always click, click uh, overhead lights. We can, you know, click this and overhang, and we know that we're just going to gather more power later. It's its own little self-powered unit with the solar panel. I mean, we have like six or seven of those on board. They're in every space. Some of them are have red lights on, that can have red lights on them. So we have them for emergency lighting for navigation. Um, some of them can have multiple different colors. There's like a you know, a disco-y kind of Yeah, light. party mode. Uh, it's got like green, yellow, purple, red, you know, the, every color under the sun. But you can um, make it so it's just one color. And that's also a good naviga extra navigational light um, if you need green or red. Um, yeah. But we find that we use them mostly for anchor lights because our anchor light is so high up on our mast, you got to go far away to see it. But if you're like just in, if you're just like, you know, in close to shore and and there's people boating around you they're not going to see your light on like just like our friends have just said like you didn't have your anchor light on last night and we're like yeah we did you just it's just so high up it, it when you're so close to each other you're not going to see it so we put a lucy light out just for an extra extra um to be seen light uh i would definitely recommend having them on board especially because on executive cloudy days foggy days when your solar panels aren't running up to speed um you want something to save on power you got a lucy light a couple lucy lights that's another way to have save power in the evenings um i've got one more thing singing the praises of these lamps is that i had it you know like i once clipped it onto a lifeline it didn't clip all the way and that it blew off and uh so i had a missing lucy light and uh you know these things float 
and they're waterproof. And uh, months later, I was looking, I was walking down the dock, and I saw it looked like the very bottom of a Lucy light, just like at the bottom of the dock there. And then I reach under, and I grab it out, and sure enough, that Lucy light had been living under a dock in the ocean for months, and it was, it was mint. It didn't, didn't affect it at all. And even if the um, the inflatable part breaks, like it pops or something, I mean, I guess you could re-glue it back together, but you can also just cut the panel, cut the solar panel off and the light, and then put it on a jar or something, um, to for or a ziplock or something, just something to have like where you can just still be grab light and it's still waterproof. Put it in a ziplock or something, but you still have a light to be able to see all over the place. Um, actually, and another flashlight. Yeah, so Lucy lights, they're good. Um, this video not endorsed by Lucy Light. <laughs> we just make and love them and use them. We've used them for years and we like them a lot. That's a Christmas present idea, Dad. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. See you later.